And the yeah. fact that he let George come back and was like, it's cool, man. No big deal. No, it wasn't. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Girls Gone Hallmark, a Hallmark review podcast. I'm Megan, and I'm a lifelong Hallmark movie fan. I'm Wendy, and I now hate Valentine's Day. (laughs) Today we're discussing (laughs) Welcome to Valentine, the third installment in Hallmark's Love You Wary lineup. If you want to connect with us outside of the podcast, we would love for you to follow us on Instagram. We are both at Girls Gone Hallmark and at Megan and Wendy. You can also jump into our Facebook group where we had a big conversation about this movie. It's at Girls Gone Hallmark on Facebook. And just a quick reminder that we produce not one but two podcasts. So you can also find Wendy and I at Long Story Short with Megan and Wendy. That's a women's lifestyle podcast. We'd love for you to take a listen over there. Let's jump into some Hallmark news and notes. Okay. This is a reach. Okay. But one of the movies in the March lineup is called The Love Club, colon, Nicole's Pen Pal. Mm Mm-hmm. Come to find out, that is part of a four-part series. It has already aired in Canada. There are three other movies. We don't have official release dates on when Hallmark will be dropping those movies. Mm -hmm. But much like The Wedding Veil, it centers around four women. And their stories tie in a little bit. Are we looking forward to this movie? Well, I guess I'm going to have to see how the first one goes. I'm not not looking forward to it. Mm -hmm. I mean, Hallmark does love a series, though. Well, I feel like we're kind of in a lull for Hallmark right now. Like, uh, yeah, like February and March. And then when we get to spring and summer, we're like, we get going again. But so are we going to see like a bunch of acquired movies? Well, you say that, but March's lineup is like... Tyler Hines, Christopher Palaha, Paul Campbell. I don't think they're just feeding us filler right now. Maybe I just feel like this weekend was filler, and so I'm grouchy about it. (laughs) I will remind you that last week's movie you called one of your top five of all time. I still stand by it right now. Okay. Listener Michelle had commented in our Facebook group that she wondered if I only really liked it because I am headed to Paris in the next couple of months. And she might be right. So perhaps, I, but I think it was still a great movie. I still liked it. I will rewatch it in like six to nine months and see where I am. Uh, like you said, Hallmark News is real light right now. Mm-hmm. Um, a Hallmark Channel movie titled, titled Spring Breakthrough is filming on the campus of Spring Hill College in Mobile, Alabama this month, Ooh. according to the Alabama Film Office. Goldman Casting LLC is seeking background extras for 12 hours of work for 125 bucks. Hey, I would do that in a heartbeat if they were local. Would you? $125 for 12 hours of like standing around? Eh, Maybe I guess I would do it. For a day? Just to see? Yeah, Yeah. I might. Yeah, I might too. I might too. I would not be doing it for the money. Finally, Hallmark, in an effort at cross-promotion, has released a Loveuary playlist on Spotify. It is called Loveuary. It has 15 songs, including songs like Until I Found You by Steven Sanchez. Oh, that was in the Sweeter Than Chocolate. Indeed. Well, here's a hot tip. They should make a Spotify playlist for The Way Home, which Mm -hmm. has had much better music in it. In fact... Created by the Hallmark Channel, a way home playlist. It features only 10 songs at this point, but all the hits that we've heard, This Year's Love by David Gray, Summer Girls by LFO, Baby One More Time, There She Goes. That's exciting. I was rewatching those episodes with my daughter last night, and in the scene when they're in the field singing LFO, she goes, what song is that? (laughs) Oh, God. Your teenager would really love that song today i think i think she would yes (laughs) moving on Mm -hmm. let's do a quick synopsis but do we need to talk about this synopsis well i used the one from the hallmark channel which let me read it and you can tell me if this is the one we need to talk about okay 
After losing her apartment and her job right before Valentine's Day, Olivia is introduced to George, who takes her on a cross-country road trip that has them reevaluating life's priorities. Well, I will tell you that Hallmark has edited that. <laughs> I just picked it up like yesterday, I think. So in their press release, first of all, Eagle Eye Hallmark Watcher Mike is our unpaid assistant. And <laughs> he had reached out initially regarding the IMDb synopsis mm -hmm. uh, because the IMDb synopsis says something odd and then i looked at the hallmark channel press release for this movie and it says something similar it's a week away from valentine's day and olivia loses both her boyfriend and her job in the same week oh interesting yes and then there's more george agrees to take olivia to her destination in exchange for a free night stay in her hometown Oh, never part of the discussion. Since she's low on cash, she agrees to take turns driving so he can get to Los Angeles in under five days. There's never that mm -mm. discussion. Mm -mm. The two strangers set out on the open road, both on their way to being who they think they're supposed to be. This is, to me, a different movie than what we saw. <laughs> Do you think? Oh, yeah. this, this is kind of like what came first, the chicken or the egg. Do you think, like, the synopsis came first and... The movie turned out totally different, or do you think they cut some stuff out of the movie? I have to assume things were cut from the movie. Because there was never talk of her having a boyfriend, right? No. No. Hmm. Never. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. All right. Let's do some news and notes. Okay. This movie was previously titled Valentine, Nebraska. Until recently, actually, because when we wrote our preview on our website, MaganaWendy.com, we have it titled as Valentine, Nebraska. So this movie was set in the actual town of Valentine, Nebraska, but it was filmed in Ottawa, Ontario, Canada. During December, which you can tell, like, it's very cold. Like, you yes, can see their especially breath. during the parade. <laughs> like the townspeople are bundled up. Maybe that's why their parade only consisted of one float. <laughs> I, thought I liked the parade. Oh, uh, get out. Oh, my God. Stop. You did not. I did. I have so many problems with it. Oh, God. Oh, God. So this movie has a lot of Hallmark newcomers involved, including Er Steven Brogren. He has 15 directing credits. Lots of Degrassi. Mm-hmm. And then Lifetime movie style titles like Obsessed to Death. And he does have a Christmas movie titled A Chance for Christmas. But that wasn't Hallmark, right? Indeed. It was right. not. Right. Um, writer, the writers of this movie are total newcomers as well. Mm -hmm. Jen Bashian and Stephanie Abel Horowitz. Jen Bashian, I hope I'm saying her last name correct, is known for improv and sketch comedy, and she has two other writing credits on her IMDb, including a short called This Remains and a to-be-original movie called Frankie Meets Jack, starring Joey Lawrence and the uh, dearly recently. departed Anne Heche. Yes. <laughs> yeah, both Jen Bashian and Stephanie Abel Horowitz both have a number of non-writing credits. As you mentioned, Jen has 14 acting credits and Stephanie has nine director credits. So they're just getting their writer feet wet. Right. And Stephanie Abel Horowitz, she has, she's written a couple of shorts and an episode of a Disney Plus show called Launchpad, which I haven't heard of. We watch a lot of Disney Plus around here, but I haven't heard of this show. And a movie called Sometimes They Think About Dying, which has really decent IMDb reviews. Oh. Yeah. It's about, like, depression. Our lead actors are not new to Hallmark. Catherine Davis, who plays lead Olivia, has 23 acting credits, including Hallmark's A Christmas Carousel. Mm. And lead actor Markian Tarsiuk, if we're saying it correctly, please reach out. He has 29 acting credits, including very recently Christmas at the Golden Dragon, Our Italian Christmas Memories, as well as a role in the Hannah and Swenson Mysteries being revived in 2023. Mm. Um, he, I read an article that he described this movie, Welcome to Valentine, as, quote, Harry, when Harry meets Sally with a Southern American flair. Huh. Huh is right. 
What's your first impression of Welcome to Valentine? My first impression is goodbye, yeah. <laughs> impression is miss hacky sucks who's miss hacky the old lady villain yes oh god Jeez, louise okay i want to just before we get into it i just want to say that i have given a lot of thought about reviewing this movie and some of our listeners of this podcast have come back with critiques that we can sometimes be too hard on movies where people work really hard on and so on and so forth, right? Mm -hmm. So I ha just please take that into consideration. I have given this movie and my notes a lot of thought. I don't want to come in and like bash it completely because I know there are a lot of people that spend a lot of money and take a lot of time and heart and soul and whatever to make these movies. I hear you, and I think that's a great point. I have also thought about this movie. Here's what I don't like. I don't like watching a movie, and as I watch it, I know that I'm not going to be able to rave about this movie. Mm -hmm. I feel like mm, I'd rather just skip it, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so, yes, I acknowledge that this was the product of a lot of hard work from a lot of people, and I, I think sometimes what happens, if you look at that synopsis, it seems clear to me that things were cut from this movie. And this perhaps was not the movie that any one person intended to make, mm -hmm. but was maybe a compromise. Mm, I see. Or maybe it was just really rushed and getting to perhaps. market. I don't know. Perhaps. So let's talk about what we did like. <laughs> okay, I'm going to start. The supporting cast stood out to me. Dang it. Yeah. Oh, did I steal your <laughs> thunder? So sorry. Uh, specifically, Sophie Bastel, who plays roommate Tess. And yeah. she gives one of the best lines in the movie, which I am going to mention in a in a few minutes. Also, mechanic tow truck driver Ronald, I thought was very funny. Yes. And finally, the young actor Bayan Hoffman, who plays Mickey, I enjoyed quite a bit. And I have a question for you. Uh huh. Did you know that the actor who plays Mickey also plays young Danny? In the way home. <gasps> no, great. Yes, oh. yes. And I wanted to ask your opinion. Um, how old do you think Mickey's character was supposed to be? Oh, that's a good question. Eight. I thought he played much younger. Uh huh. And I wondered if you thought this character could have possibly be been written as neurodivergent. Oh, interesting. It was uh, never mentioned. I don't think that isn't the case. Mm. It was just a, a, an it observation. A quiet place to work on is Valentine's. I enjoyed the character of Mickey actually quite a bit. I agree with you on the supporting cast. Um, I also liked Andrea Davis as Barbara May, Cara Duncan as Vanessa, Here's what I think about the supporting cast versus the lead actors. I really liked Catherine Davis, who plays Olivia in this movie. The problem, I think, is that so much of this movie is about or supposed to be about her budding romance. Mm -hmm. And I, I wasn't sold on that relationship. Right. I didn't believe it. And so I think that obviously reflects on my feelings about her. Mm -hmm. But I really enjoyed her. I think she's cute as hell. I just think that the relationship chemistry wasn't there for me. Mm -hmm. And I think George is kind of a jerk in this movie. You think? Intentionally, <laughs> right? That's, yeah. the, that's the character description. And <clears throat> he doesn't break out of it soon enough or often enough for me to buy into him. Right. I have some thoughts on that in my wished for category. And so I like the characters, the supporting characters more than the lead characters. Yes. Not so much a reflection on the acting. Right. Uh, but I cared more about the supporting characters. 100%. I feel All the right. same way. I loved the cute on theme wardrobe in this movie. Like, 
if you're making a Valentine movie, make a Valentine movie the same way our Christmas movies have everyone in an ugly sweater at one point and everyone drinking hot chocolate, particularly Olivia's wardrobe was just like a week-long Valentine Day fashion show. I really enjoyed it. It didn't feel twee or precious to me. Mm -hmm. I just thought she looked great. I didn't even notice it. And that's something I really notice, especially in a movie that I don't particularly like because I'm (laughs) searching for something Mm -hmm. to like about it. I liked Olivia's art, and I thought the rendering of Big Red was quite cool. I thought that was neat. And then I thought, ooh, I wonder if I can commission somebody to like, because my dad has cars like that. I wonder if I could commission somebody to, to draw something like that for my dad. But then I thought, I wonder if they just made it in Canva, you know, like pixelated it or did something. I really was like, was there an AI, like draw this car in this style? I wondered that too. But you can definitely commission. I know. Art. Isn't that a good idea? You really should. Remember I did that one for my parents house that one yes day? exactly i had the I same idea bet yeah that same artist who's a friend of ours i was wondering will she will settings she... on etsy i bet she would do a car i don't know i'll have to reach out to her yeah in this movie there were some lines that definitely had me laugh out loud mm. one of them was while george and olivia during their first meeting at the art gallery they were talking about artists and he goes nice nerdy name drop I enjoyed that. Also, during that same time, they were her roommate and Olivia were checking out the hot guys, and they referenced one of the guys as (laughs) Dreadlock Denzel, which I thought was quite funny. And he is uh, credited as such on IMDb. I saw that. I loved that. And finally, when Olivia and George were talking about Valentine, Nebraska, and George says something about, like, DJ Cupid spinning some sick beats tonight, I... (laughs) It made me laugh. I felt that That's there were one. there were some like fresh I, I I don't want to say like fresh language, but like have we heard the word sick in a Hallmark movie? Right. Right. You know, Dreadlock Denzel? Like if some, Dreadlock that, Denzel was great. Laughed out loud, wrote it down. Right. Right. All right. I have one more. Okay. And it has to go back to the actors. You enjoyed Catherine Davis. I enjoyed actor Markian. Oh, man. Tarsiak. Oh, Tarsiak? boy. Yeah. Sorry. I liked him in the two movies from Christmas. And every time I see him, I go, oh, is that Jeremy Jordan? Yeah. I'd like to see those two in a movie where they play brothers because oh, I think nice. they look very much alike. Oh, I, I, I feel a fake movie poster coming on. Ooh. I like that idea. <laughs> Brothers Maybe. in love. Poster. Brothers in love. A national park romance. Just <laughs> Let's talk about what we wished for. There was not nearly enough road trip in this road trip movie for me. Oh, God. See, that's what I worry about, that there's going to be too much green screen in a road trip movie, because we've seen it. Sure, sure. There was... I want to see a well done road trip. Let me tell you, here's what ruined it for me. Mm -hmm. When he said no food or drink in the car, I was mad. I was like, I don't want to ride in a car without a snack. That's the only enjoyable part about a road trip is wearing your comfy clothes, sit in the car and eating snacks the entire time. I can't even imagine road tripping in that car because I'm sure it doesn't have a shoulder belt. It's probably just a lap seat belt in that car. It probably has no radio. It doesn't have Sirius XM. You can't plug in your phone. (laughs) And it's, you know, it's loud as hell, too. (laughs) It's not a comfortable ride. No, No, I would die. Climb in the, when it's your turn to sit in the back seat of that car. You gotta climb over the back, over the (laughs) seat. Oh my gosh. Oh my goodness. For me, I thought, and you mentioned this before, the two lead characters, and let me be clear, characters, not actors, were super unlikable to me. I was not rooting for them at all you have to give me something redeemable that makes me want these two characters to be together and if i could throw it back to last week's paris proposal that movie started out where the the male character was a little like not very nice right Uh uh-huh but he ends up redeeming himself because, you know, he's got this other family stuff going on, but then he, like, is vulnerable with the lead actress, and, like, there's this whole, like, and then you end up rooting for them. This movie, 
George is like a super tool, especially when he unloads on Ronald for the like mistake of the jumper cables or whatever. Yes. Was so out of line. I would have been like, pound sand, dude, you're on your own. Like, get out of my driveway. <laughs> like, there's no way. He was such an asshole. 100% agree. Um, I thought Olivia was quite bitchy. Okay. So, like, their, like, banter together wasn't even, like, fun to watch. It was just, like, mean jabs at each other. And I was like, oh, these two people hate each other. Poke, poke, yeah. Yikes. To me... At one point, I had the thought that I have occasionally watching Hallmark movies is that they've been put into, like, a random Hallmark movie generator, and then they just spit out, like, an AI-generated list of tropes. 100%. It felt like they were like, well, here's what we need. We need a small-town girl in the big city who's struggling, and we need a dude who is expected to take over the family business, but that's really not what's in his heart. And while all of those things are fine... None of them, to me, were fully developed enough to make me care about any of them. Right. I liked Olivia's art when we see that car. I needed to see more of Olivia working as an artist. All I knew was the struggle, right? She didn't want anybody to look at her art. She wasn't successful as an artist. But show me her being an artist. Mm -hmm. Make me believe it. I just wanted something to care about. I, yeah. I I cared, again, more about the lives of the supporting characters. I kind of wanted Olivia to end up with Ronald a little bit. Oh, really? Yeah, because they have history, right? You know, yeah. like, and he's a nice dude. And the yeah. fact that he let George come back and was like, it's cool, man. No big deal. No, it wasn't cool, I, man. I agree. Like, they were like, when they went to the get milkshakes or whatever, mm. it was like two, they were broing out 100%. Yes. And I enjoyed that. I was like, here's the smallest part of this movie that I kind of like, like these two together. Sure. But like, George just treated Ronald like shit. Like, yeah, George didn't prior to that. that moment. No. Can no. I say something potentially problematic? Sure. I think there is <clears throat> a problematic portrayal in this movie when you look at the relationship that the people of color have in this movie to other characters go ahead i'm listening i i, I hear what you're i feel what you're gonna put down <clears throat> for example the ronald getting yelled at scene made me really uncomfortable felt like a white man yelling at a person of color who was right? helping him out who yes need to help him yes miss hacky overseeing the work that Vanessa was doing mm -hmm. and telling her she was doing it wrong and essentially telling her she shouldn't be the one doing it and ultimately sabotaging the work that she was doing. I would have felt differently about that character perhaps if we weren't looking at a troubling skin color dynamic in my yes. mind. Yes, I, I absolutely like agree. That way. Yep. I thought so, too, while watching it. And I was like, I don't know how. Thank you for putting it into words because I didn't know how to quite I don't know that I've done that. it well. It just made me uncomfortable to watch. Mm -hmm. And it put, quite frankly, the white people in this movie in positions of power that they had not earned. Yes. And I did not enjoy the way that made me feel or the way it looks. Great. Great take. Okay. I feel the same way. In a sharp left turn, I'm just going to tell you that I could not get excited for a Valentine's Day parade that consisted of one float, some dollar store decorations, and a villain who was pissed that she was replaced after 30 years. Come I, on, those dogs on that float were real cute. I was impressed. Okay, dogs, fine. Fine. But they, oh my God, when they were, she was like setting up the lighting and they were all excited to do their like big lighting thing. It, literally is paper decorations on this like scaffolding and then they turn on one string of lights and they're like oh i i did need more lights in that uh, it just was poor execution i thought but you know it's the equivalent of the town christmas tree lighting when the christmas tree is the size of the one in my living room i know i get it if you're telling me this is their big thing that like christmas is just a warm-up to valentine's day and this is it it is a fail Let's talk about Did You See That? I have two things. One cool. actual Did You See That? And one I'm annoyed by this comment. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you go first. 
Well, I did a little Google Maps work. <clears throat> the drive from New York City to Valentine, Nebraska would be a 22-hour drive. That assumes n- no stopping. Wow. We never see Olivia driving. We only ever see George driving. B, we never see them, like, stop for a hotel because then they'd have this weird, like, oh, one room or two. I have no money. How are we going to do this? Mm -hmm. We never see them stopping for a meal. Did they drive through the night? George drove 24 hours straight without a break, never letting Olivia drive his precious car. I need, I needed some more of the logistics there of what was going on. They just want us to call that stuff. Yes. You're just hoping people don't understand geography and no budget for a green screen. Get them out of the car and move on. Yeah, exactly. I have one. There was a pride flag hanging on a coffee shop in the downtown area of Valentine, which I thought was pretty stinking cool. Obviously, that was not actually Valentine, Nebraska, but, you know, Ontario, Canada. And I'm annoyed by this next little bit of dialogue. I'm sure nobody else caught it, but here it is. George has big red at the shop where Ronald was like looking it over. And George says, tell me the name of another body shop. And as a girl who grew up in the body shop business, family owned body shop business, a body shop makes repairs to the body Body. (laughs) of the car. Yeah. Whereas a me- mechanic makes repairs to the engine. So, so he should have been like, give me a le- another mechanic or uh-huh. another whatever, not another body shop. It nice. just drives me crazy. And I know nobody else caught it, but body shops know. have a bad stigma from years and years and years back. And I'm just here to tell you. Oh, interesting. You know, because there's that whole idea that body shops are made up of You know, uneducated men who hang naked calendars up in their workspace. You know what I mean? Uh And it's just not like that. I'm here to tell you it's just not like that. (laughs) So (laughs) please Google the details and get it right. However, there is zero chance that Ronald, the town mechanic, is going to screw up the placement of the jumper cables. No, but I mean, in that moment, if he was distracted Sure, anybody can make that kind of error, but you're right. Ronald's not going to mess it up. All right. What did you rate this movie? I gave it one star. Whoa, I gave it two. Why? <laughs> Why? I mean, <laughs> I, supporting characters. Oh, I gave it I gave it one for them. Okay. Yeah. Ugh, sorry. Them. <laughs> I'm sorry. Now, next week, it looks like we're going to get a remake of the 1987 movie Mannequin. I swear to you, I'm watching the preview and I was like, is Hallmark making Mannequin? Seriously, right? <laughs> Which, by the way, love that movie. I hope, I hope it's good. <laughs> I do, do. I'm so nervous. I mean, let's see Clay come to life. It's- and The Way Home is back this week, so we will be back with a recap of episode five of The Way Home tomorrow. Thank you for listening to this episode of Girls Gone Hallmark. If you enjoy these episodes, we'd love for you to leave us a five-star rating and a review. And we will be back tomorrow with another episode. Thanks for listening. Bye. Bye. uh. (laughs) Bye.